No fewer than 17 patients died of coronavirus-related complications in the last 48 hours. The Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Akin Abayomi, made this known in a series of tweets on Tuesday, where he announced that nine COVID-19-related deaths were recorded, bringing the total COVID-19-related deaths in Lagos to 59. Given an update yesterday, the commissioner said, and I quote, eight additional COVID-19-related deaths were recorded. Total COVID-19-related uh, COVID deaths now stands at 67. And joining us to take a look at this is uh, medical doctor Bimbo Oyudekun. Good morning, Dr. Bimbo. Good morning. Now, uh, Dr. Bimbo, the, the figures are increasing, uh, 11,000 plus now. Should we be worried about, you know, these figures? Well, well why, while not wanting to advocate for panic, I'd also say that um, we should be concerned as a people, uh, especially those of us that live in Lagos. I think we do need to take this threat seriously, much more seriously than we currently are doing. And we need to realize that um, these instructions we've been given, things like physical distancing, um, things like wearing a face mask are for our own protection, not just our own protection, but also protection of our family members, protection of everyone we love who comes into contact with us. So we do need to be concerned, but panic is not a useful response. What we need is actually to comply with the instructions we've been given and make sure that we're keeping ourselves safe at every point in time. Right, Doctor. Uh, some have argued that with the lockdown eased or uh, relaxed, if you like, um, there's a yes. possibility of, you know, uh, us headed to herd immunity. Can you speak to us more about that? And do you agree that that's where we are likely uh, headed? Well, currently, the state of um, research on COVID-19, which, by the way, is a novel virus, it's caused by a novel virus, so there's not much experience with it to say this is how it behaves, this is not how it behaves. But from what the information that is available right now, there's no evidence that herd immunity has developed in any of the countries that it has gone through. Um, there are no reports like that from China. We even have some instances of reinfection in some people. So for now, the, the possibility of herd immunity, all the countries that... Um, tried to aim for that, have reversed course. Um, the United Kingdom reportedly was trying to do that, the reverse course. Sweden has, Sweden has published as of yesterday or two days ago that they are reviewing their strategy, which was um, close to that kind of strategy. So really, I wouldn't subscribe to the idea of herd immunity. There is no evidence for it right now, and I think it would be a dangerous thing to aim for. Uh, there's a growing mistrust, uh, Dr. Bimbo, if you like, among average Nigerians, Lagosians, for instance, people who still say, as of today, that, you know, COVID-19 is not real. I was out and about, for instance, yesterday, and in a place like Mile 12, we had several people mm -hmm. who, who, as soon as they recognized that we're from the media, were saying, no, there is no COVID-19, it's all false, it's all propaganda, it's all scam. How do you respond mm -hmm. to this at this point? Well, what I'll, say, what I'll say to that, if I were to speak to them directly, I'd say um, this is not the kind of thing you want to find out if it exists by coming, by falling ill from it. It's really not a very pleasant thing to, to experience. Uh, but more to the point, let's speak to the people who have the responsibility. Um, the government agencies, especially the legal state government, has more of a responsibility to spread the information to the grassroots in a way that is accessible and understandable to them, and using people who have um, social clout, if you will, with the people whom you want to reach. I think it's also important that uh, the information about, about COVID-19 and how it is being handled needs to be done in such a way that can engender trust, because truly, there have been conflicting, there have been conflicting information in the public, in the public domain, um, especially when you hear some state governors in other places, but they are on the media saying things like um, they don't have it in their state. You have um, 
a commissioner for health that went on on air and was talking about being forced to admit that there's COVID-19 in her state. Those kind of actions are irresponsible from those people. And at the level of governance, well, perhaps people in government need to reach out to each other and agree that we are going to be responsible in our communication about this. But generally speaking, there needs to be more done to make people realize that this is actually true and it has serious effects. So, uh, the, the, some people are also saying, experts like you are also saying, you know, projecting that COVID-19 is not going anytime soon. You know, it's not a matter of in two weeks' time we are done here with uh, COVID-19. If that be the case, what measures should we be uh, looking at now in terms of what do we need to do to live with this uh, situation until such a time where we know, when we know that indeed we are free uh, from COVID-19? Well, it is true that it is not going away in, in the short term. It's not something that's going to disappear in two weeks, um, like you said. So what we need to do as individuals is make sure that you reduce your exposure, your potential exposure. That means that any non-essential non um, travel or movement Please cut it out. If you, are, if you need to go out of your house, please wear a mask. Now, if you're wearing a mask, remember that you are not wearing it only to protect yourself. You're also wearing it to protect the other person. The masks become effective when everybody is wearing them. Now, in that respect, I'll move on to governmental responsibility because we've told individuals they need to wash their hands use hand sanitizer when soap and water is not available. We have, um, we told them to wear masks. Now it is important that the rule about the use of face masks must be enforced. I, where I live, I move around and I see a lot of people are not wearing their face masks. Some of them are wearing it on their, wearing it on their chin. Some of them are just dangling it by their hands. There needs to be enforcement at the local level. I'm talking about at the local government level to say that if you don't have your face mask, you can't have access to these places. You can't be on the road, and that should drive up compliance. Right. Um, Dr. Bimbo, are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay. Now, lastly, before I, I let you go, um, Yes. You have mentioned the things that we need to do. The, the sad part, if you like, about COVID-19 is the fact that uh, each person is responsible and we have a collective role to play. But now life yes. seems to have returned to normal, like you noticed also and observed. Uh, apart from people wearing the face mask, there is nothing that shows that COVID-19 seems, uh, you know, is still actively in this country. Now, should the spike mm. increase now that everything is relaxed? Should the, the numbers increase? What are we expected to do? What will be the remedy? Okay, I, I think um, the old saying that prevention is better than cure comes into play here. It will be important for us to try and prevent those numbers rising because they are rising. Um, the, if you look at the cumulative infection rates that we have had, it is rising. The total number of infections we've had is rising, and the rate at which those infections are increasing is also rising. Now, in terms of prevention, we're going to need something much more concerted and serious in terms of, for instance, public transport. Mm -hmm. how, is, how is physical distance being maintained in public transport? I've been seeing buses that are filled to the brim with four passengers per row. We're going to have to cut that out. So we're going to have to go to something much safer. I have been seeing um, people, you know, going into shops to buy things where you have four or five people crowded in there. So it's more a matter of now the advocacy from the government needs to go to business owners to say that we have allowed you to reopen, but these are the rules and you have to keep to the rules of reopening. You, you shouldn't be able to allow people to be crowded in shops or in buses 
those kind of things. And of course, those of us as individuals, each one of us needs to think about ourselves and wonder just how much am I willing to risk my health. Mm -hmm. Those are those are those are the things I would suggest. Right. Thank you so very much, Dr. Bimbo, for your time and also keep safe out there too. Thank you very much.